Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video you will learn about the right way to manage your project's config if you have a multi-module architecture. And this is an extension of the previous video in which I've showed you how you should manage the dependencies in a multi-module project so that you can do things like this to just add dependencies with Compose, with Hilt, or here with Room and Retrofit. So if you've missed that video and you want to learn about that, then definitely watch that first. I will link it somewhere up here. What we'll focus on in this video is to get rid of all that config that is at the moment just copy pasted between all of our modules with slight differences. And we now want to have a global place where we manage this config so we don't need to reapply it like this for every single module. And in order to achieve that, there are multiple ways. In this video, I will show you how you can do that with a custom Gradle plugin. In my multi-module course, which I've linked down below, I've used a different approach, which is also totally valid, just like this one. But just to give you something new, I want to show you how you can create a Gradle plugin, just like this here, in order to apply shared logic for your Gradle files. So in the end, a Gradle plugin is nothing else than this library plugin, this Kotlin Android plugin, this field plugin, which for example, generates code behind the scenes when you annotate specific classes with Hilt annotations. And you can then very easily apply this by just adding such a line in the plugins block of your module. So where do we really code this plugin and how does that code even look like? In the end, that's nothing else than just Kotlin code because we are here in Kotlin Gradle and we can just take this plugin and put it in build source. So in Kotlin here, main Gradle plugin, let's call it like that. It's really nothing else than just a normal Kotlin class, which inherits from a plugin. This one here, uh, the gen uh, generic one from Gradle. And it takes in a project from Gradle as well, since we want to apply this for our Gradle project. And you'll notice that this actually needs to override a function, which is called apply. So command I and then enter to add this function. And here I like to rename this target to project. Here we get a reference to our Gradle project, which contains information about the current configuration and which allows us to change this configuration for our project. And while creating a plugin that does something like the Dagger Hill plugin to generate code is incredibly hard, creating a plugin on the other hand that just manages config like here is fairly easy actually. So this apply function will now be called as soon as we apply this plugin somewhere. When do we apply a plugin? Well, as soon as we introduce it and call it here in the, in the plugins block of one of our Gradle files. And in here, we now get a reference to product with which we can do pretty much whatever we want. On the one hand, inside this plugin, we can apply other plugins in order to use these. So for example, private function, apply plugins, we pass in our product reference. And in here, we just then refer to the project, call apply. Uh, don't confuse this with the apply function up here. No, nope, this is just the Kotlin scope function. So we don't need to prepend product all the time. And here we can then say we add a plugin like this with a specific ID. On the one hand, Android library plugin. Then we have the Kotlin Android plugin. Then we have Kotlin capped. And we have the dagger.hield.android.plugin. So this now allows us to apply these plugins in any other plugin that uses this main Gradle plugin. What else do we need? Well, first of all, let's just call this here, apply plugins project, pass it here. But as I said, we also want to share the project config. So what is contained here in this Android block, for example, if we go in here, we then create another function, private function, or we'll apply, let's call it set project config, pass in the project. So how do we now get the Android specific block here and how can we manipulate that? Because by default, that's just a normal Gradle project, which doesn't know anything about Android, could also be a pure Gradle project without an Android SDK involved in it. So there is nothing like project that Android. We can get a reference to that by creating a little helper function project.android. This will return a so-called library extension from Android built Gradle. Import this 
And here we can simply re refer to the extensions of the product. So an extension is pretty much just um, such a block here, like Android. And we then say dot get by type. And the type is a library extension, double colon class of Java. So that is the Android specific extension that comes from the Android Gradle plugin. And it allows us to get our Android extension with all its characteristics. So in here, in the set project config block, we can now say project that Android dot apply. And in the supply block, we now have access to everything. We also have access to inside of this Android block. So default config, build types, all that kind of stuff. And for this config, I want to paste another object here, another Kotlin object called project config, which contains this shared config. You can copy paste this from GitHub below or just write it off. So our app ID, minimum SDK, compile SDK, target SDK, version code, version name. And we can then use this in here to, for example, set the compile SDK. And that is project config that compile SDK. Then our default config block can also be opened here where we can set the minimum SDK to project config min SDK. We can set the test instrumentation runner to what is the default. Let's take a look in our app Gradle file. Pretty much just this one here. And I've also noticed that I forgot to change the Kotlin compiler extension version in the last video, which is why the uh, Kotlin version broke and I had to downgrade it. So here we could simply refer to versions compose compiler and then bump our Kotlin version up to um, 1.8.20 again. So in our build Gradle file from build source. But let's go back to where did I leave our Gradle plugin here, main Gradle plugin and we paste uh, this instrumentation runner. And we want to set the compile SDK, uh, not the compile SDK, the compile options of all modules to use the JDK 18, which I've also already changed in the previous video, but we want to manage this here at the central place. So source compatibility is Java version 18, as well as the, what is it, target compatibility like this. And you could now also do everything else you want to configure for all modules, such as you know, these build types, the release one, enable minify or not, refer to a program file. I will leave that out here for the sake of simplicity since we don't necessarily need these, uh, this configuration. The only thing we need is this cotton options block, which we can't apply in this main Gradle plugin, but rather we need to apply this here in our build source directory um, directly below these dependencies by writing val compile kotlin um, which is a kotlin compile object um, this one here by tasks and then we can say compile kotlin dot kotlin options that's what we need and we set the jdk or what is it called jvm target to 18. so now we created our very own riddle plugin here where we just apply this shared config for all the Gradle files that are now going to apply this plugin. We need to make sure that we also call this function, of course, set project config. And then let's see how we can now apply this by going to our modules. Um, oops, that was the wrong file or a Gradle file of our data source module. And we now want to remove all that code except for the namespace because that is individual for each Gradle uh, module. And we also can set that in our Gradle plugin because as I said, that differs for each module. So remove everything except for that Android block, except for that dependencies block. So we can still override specific attributes here, which we want to have different for the specific module. And here in this plugins block, we also don't need this anymore because the, the Hilt plugin is applied from our main Gradle plugin. Capt is applied. We just need these two first plugins in order to find this Android block here. So even though they are applied from our main Gradle plugin, which you can apply by, like this, by the way, main Gradle plugin, even though this also applies these two plugins here, 
it applies this too late. So um, in order to understand that, you need to understand the order in which Gradle evaluates specific uh, pieces of functionality. But here we would need to evaluate these two plugins very early in order to find this Android block because that comes from the Kotlin Android plugin or from this one, I'm not sure. But we, we need these two plugins here in all of our submodules. There's also an easier way to specify these just by using backticks. So Kotlin library, for example, um, is it called a library? No, it's actually Android library. Android library, oops, like this, and one for Kotlin Android. And then we can get rid of that. And this is now how our final Gradle files for each module will look like. We can copy this code here and go to our books UI module, remove all that code again, except for the namespace and paste this here, like this. We just can't apply this for our app level module since that's not a library, but in here, in our app level Gradle file, we can at least replace these constants here, project config dot compile SDK. We have our application ID, app ID, minimum SDK. project config dot target SDK, project config version code, and finally project config dot version name. And the rest can stay like it is here just for the application module. But all other modules that you add from now on just need a very light Gradle file like this one since all the shared logic is applied here in this main Gradle plugin. You can still add your dependencies in a very fine-grained manner by just having an overwritten dependencies block here and add these with a single function call like this. And it's very, very obvious what kind of dependencies are introduced here. Let's synchronize this. Hopefully we don't get any more errors. I would be surprised if not, <laughs> but let's see. Looking good. The build or the, the sync actually succeeded. Let's also launch this. And if that works, then it looks like we have a working multi-module setup, which is now very, very scalable. And yes, it is actually launching. Everything seems to be working just fine. So I really hope you enjoyed these two videos and that they taught you how you can manage such a multi-module project. Of course, there is much, much more to say about multi-module architecture, especially when it comes to building a real multi-module app. That is what I have my very extensive multi-module course for, in which you learn everything I've left out in this two video playlist. So how you can actually come up with a structure for a multi-module project, when you should actually apply that and when you should definitely not do that. You will learn a different approach to sharing logic in Gradle files like I show you here. And you'll just build a very cool calorie tracker app, which you can then use in your portfolio as well. So if that sounds good to you, get the course, click the first link below. Happy learning. And other than that, thanks for watching this video. I will see you back in the next one. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye bye.